So they told me I get to keep talking till my slide starts. So I want to tell you guys a couple things, which is that I'd like to give a shout out to Kara, because without her, I wouldn't look so nice, and to Carolyn, because there would be no squirrel in my slides, and to my kids. But the 80s commercial that said, this is your brain on drugs, for me, should have said, this is your brain on story. Because I've done more stupid shit high on story than I can possibly tell you in five minutes, including, but not limited, to sneaking into my neighbor's house after reading Harriet the Spy, moving to New York after reading The Great Gatsby, and becoming an activist because of Sally Field and Norma Ray. I love, I love story so much. I went to graduate school, I studied it, I became a writer. But until functional MRI machines came along, we didn't really know what our brains looked like on story. And our brains run on story. Before story existed, we captured words in pictures on walls, and now we are hipsters who read infinite jest. But that's what happens. After grad school, I spent one weekend reading this book called The Crimson Petal and the White, about a feisty prostitute who leaves her abusive man and goes out on her own. And I got up off the couch, and I went to see the boyfriend at the time, thinking we'd spend the evening, and instead I found myself breaking up with him, just like the character in the book, and running off into the night with the fog of London following me all the way to my Boulder ranch house, where I thought to myself, Oh, shit, what did I just do? <laughs> well, it's not me. Researchers have found that, in fact, fiction has an impact on your brain for three hours to five days after you read a book. And it doesn't just affect the language acquisition areas like you'd think. They help you with theory of mind, which helps you understand how other people think and feel, and with the sensory motor regions of your brain. So you're doing what you read about. This is huge because our brains are not that easy to capture. They are scanning the environment all the time, looking for, <laughs> looking for danger and novelty. That's your ADD Facebook addiction. Every time your phone pings, you look at it. You and I are basically cave dwellers looking for a good story on how to capture dinner, drag your mate into the cave, and stay warm for the winter. Story is what gets our brain's attention. So, the book really did make me do it, but how? Well, first, there's this thing called oxytocin, which is the empathy hormone. It's produced when you get riveted by a story, you follow a crisis with a character, you come out the other end, and that's the magic of story. We know this works from books and movies, and we know the brain, the, this, this is the ride that your brain takes on story. But there's another thing going on called speaker-listener neural coupling, where the speaker, me, or the narrator of a book or the hero of a story, is producing in her brain, is reflected in your brain too, which means we're connected by story. In another study, researchers in Spain found that when they used olfactory or texture words, it wasn't just the hearing part of your brain that lit up, but the part that does touch and smell lit up too. So you aren't just processing words, you're actually experiencing a story as though it were real. Ah. So, monkeys can explain this to you. Italian scientists had some monkeys that they had wired up for a research project, and they took a break. Everyone has to have a cute animal slide. They took a break, and the monkeys' brains went nuts, and they couldn't figure out why. The researchers were eating bananas, and the monkeys' brains were responding as though they were eating the bananas, too. And that's how they discovered mirror neurons. So you aren't just processing words, you're feeling what's going on. You're experiencing sweat when someone else is nervous, sex in books get you hot, fear in a movie makes your palms sweat, and breakups in stories, they make you break up because fiction is a flight simulator. We experience things we would never get to experience under any other circumstances, and we live to tell the tale. So. When I was reading the last Harry Potter book, and Harry Potter did some very nasty things to Voldemort, I got to experience the glee as if I were doing those nasty things to my personal Voldemort, my ex, without actually, <laughs> without actually having the jail time that would go along with it. So do stories serve an evolutionary purpose? Yes. Research says they help you get a better mate. Research says they make you more moral. Research says they help you survive. Well. That's all true. We would all like to survive, thrive, and get laid. But really what's important is that stories make us better humans. Because of stories, we focus. We pay attention. 
We empathize. We think about what makes other people tick. We're more flexible. We understand what's going on in other people's heads. We learn from fictional mistakes. Through stories, we become deeply connected. So it may be a drug, but I think perhaps our brains on stories are our best selves. Yeah, got it. <laughs>